And psychiatrists virtually never look at the organ they Not treat. interesting. I always uh, found that off. Yeah, think about that. And before I went to medical school, I was an x-ray technician. And our professors used to always say, how do you know unless you look? And so I fell in love with psychiatry. And I'm like, well, why aren't we looking? Everybody else looks. Orthopedic doctors look. Cardiologists look. Gastroenterology. Everybody looks. And so when I started looking at the brain in the late 1980s, I was so excited because you can see if it's working too hard or not hard enough. And in 1991, I started doing SPEC scans. SPEC stands for Single Photon Emission Computed Tomography. It's a nuclear medicine study that looks at blood flow and activity, looks at how your brain works. So it's different than a CAT scan or an MRI. They show the structure, sort of like if you pop the engine, the hood of a car, you could see what the engine actually physically looks like. SPEC is turning the engine on and seeing, well, how does it work? And it basically says to us, good activity, too little or too much. And then my job is to balance it. And the first 10 cases where I ordered SPECT just radically changed what I did for my patients and they got better faster. One woman diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease, when I scanned her, she didn't have it. What she had is this thing called pseudo-dementia, where her emotional brain was working too hard. And on an antidepressant, she got her memory back. And I'm like, whoa. And that makes me happy, right? Getting your patients well makes you happy. How do you read the spectrography? What would it show? A healthy brain versus just in basic terms to look at two charts. Is it cleared up on one, the healthy, and there's shadowing on the other? Or what does the actual tomography look like if a brain is damaged? So healthy, full, even, symmetrical activity with the cerebellum in the back bottom part of the brain generally is the most active because that has half the brain's neurons. Someone who's had a traumatic brain injury will show defects or decreases in one or multiple areas. I did a study on 21,000 people showing I could tell the difference between PTSD, emotional trauma, their emotional brains fired up, versus traumatic brain injury where we see these decreases. Mm -hmm. And that's really important because if you misdiagnose someone and you go, oh, well, they have PTSD, but they really have a low activity brain from traumatic brain injury, and you give them treatments to lower their brain further, you basically will disinhibit them and they may hurt themselves or they may hurt someone else. Never miss a beat. Subscribe to Larry King now and watch new episodes every day.